It's finally here. Freedos 1.3 Release Candidate 4 or RC4. It's a huge improvement over RC3, especially in the live CD environment. And before I get into this video, I just wanted to thank everyone on the Freedos project for making this release happen. Whether you're writing code, testing programs, reporting bugs, whatever you're doing to contribute with Freedos, thank you so much for the work that's gone into this. So there's, this is a much improved release. Uh, and special shout out to Jerome Scheidel, who's been doing really most of the heavy lifting and the hard work of making the live environment possible and all the updates to the installer. Uh, this video is going to be a quick tour of what you can do in the live environment. And before I get started, I actually want to start by rebooting my virtual machine because I want to show that I don't actually have a hard drive loaded. You actually can run FreeDOS RC4 without actually installing RC4. So let's go ahead and, and restart my virtual machine. And uh, you can see here, if I do escape, you can see I don't actually have a hard drive loaded. There's no option to boot from hard drive because there's no hard drive on the machine. I can boot from the, uh, the DVD. Let's go ahead and do that, boot from the CD. And here's the boot menu. Uh, and you can see that I can uh, just boot into the live environment or I can uh, install to the hard drive don't have a hard drive installed in this machine, or I can boot from the hard drive, again, don't have a hard drive in the machine, or I could boot from disk, which I don't actually have loaded either. So the only thing we can really do is run the live environment, which is what I wanted to show. Let's go ahead and hit return on that, and you can see it's gonna go ahead and boot up a standard version of FreeDOS 1.3 RC4, and there we are at the command prompt. Now, uh, it's really a running version of FreeDOS. If I just go ahead and, and type some commands, let's can see, uh, do a directory. I guess we'll start there first. You can see a lot of different files and directories. The uh, fdauto.bat, of course, is the startup file for command.com, and the fdconfig.sys is the uh, configuration file for the kernel. Uh, the configuration file for the kernel, not very big. In fact, I, I can go ahead and just type uh, fdconfig.sys, and you can see it doesn't fill up the screen. So you can see that's what we've got in there. And at the bottom of the line, you can see that at the bottom of the screen, you can see that's what's loading the command com and specifying fdauto.bat. Now, fdauto.bat, it's a kind of a long file. You can see it's 3.7K in size. And if I just type uh, fdauto, uh, you can see I've got more than will fit on a screen, and I could view that in a couple of different ways. Well, one way I could do that is I could do it with the more command. Now, uh, in a live environment, uh, we actually have the ability to still pipe commands from uh, one, co one command to another, and that seems like an odd thing to say, but in the DOS world, when you're running multiple commands at one time, you actually aren't piping the output directly from one program into the next. You're actually storing it in a temporary file, and then the temporary file is used to feed the next program on the command line. And in a live environment, the whole thing is read-only. It's on a CD, except we actually have to find an area on uh, in, in memory as a RAM disk that actually is where the temporary files get stored. So I can actually run commands like uh, uh, type FD auto. Uh, into more. And yeah, it's actually taken the output of FT Auto, put it into a temporary file, and it's now using temporary file going into more. And that's the contents of my FD Auto. Just wanted to show that you can actually uh, read a pretty long file. We actually include uh, more than just the more command. Uh, we also have the less command, which is a command you might recognize if you are, have, are a Linux user. And so there's less. If I do space, I can go down. Of course, if I do U, I can go up by half a screen, things like that, right? Standard less commands. So if you want to use less to view files, you don't have to use more. Less is more. Uh, other ways that I can uh, view this file, of course, is I can do uh, just the edit command on FD Auto. Now, I can't actually save anything to this. If I if I tried to uh, uh, make a uh, an entry over here, like I'll just put in a comment, uh, this is a comment. Uh, I can't actually save that. So if I do uh, file and then save, well, it's couldn't save it because it's a read-only file system. So I'll do no on that. But just just to be aware, the live environment is read-only because it's in, coming entirely off the CD. But I could use this uh, edit as just a way to view the file just by using the page down key. 
And uh, I'll just go ahead and exit that by doing file and then exit. And I don't need to save this. Uh, other ways I could do this, so I could use the the best editor in the world, uh, Edlin uh, 16. So Edlin is the command line or sort of uh, text based uh, editor uh, before the edit, and so it's it may look a little primitive, but it's uh, still kind of a neat little uh, classic editor to use. And so I'll do FD Auto, and there we have read 126 lines in FD Auto. Uh, if you remember your uh, ways to view files in in uh, edit or Edline. You can uh, just do P to print out uh, part of the file. We're paging it. It's what P stands for. Uh, I could start at the next page and do 24 P. And now I've paged out from starting at line 24. I could do uh, 47 P, right? So other ways that you could uh, view a file, and one of them is through Edlin. I just wanted to show it off because I, I kind of like Edlin as an editor. Uh, other things you can do in this, uh, we have a, a tree command, of course, as the standard DOS command. You can see what directories exist on the machine, and there it is. That's all the different directories that are installed on the live environment. Now, I'll do another video sometime later that talks about other things you can do with the live environment, like installing the system. Uh, but for now, we'll just go ahead and play with the environment. Uh, now, I said before that we don't actually have a hard drive installed in the machine. If I just run F disk, you can see that actually says no fixed disks are present. So, uh, yeah, we really don't have a hard drive loaded here. Uh, memory, I've uh, I've run this machine with a pretty low amount of memory. You can see my, my memory here is pretty limited. I don't have like, you know, a gigabyte of memory or anything. It's about, I think, eight megs total and then minus some for some other stuff. So uh, you can see I've got about 6.6 uh, uh, .6 megabytes of, uh, of actual memory. Now we have some, uh, let's go ahead and look at the, uh, the FreeDOS directory. So if I do a directory, you can see I've got a FreeDOS directory. So I'll go into that. And I've got a bunch of other directories. Let's go ahead and look at bin. We'll look at all the programs that we include in the live environment. Actually, let me just go into bin. Let's go into CD into bin. And I'm actually gonna set my uh, dir uh, options. So I'm going to say uh, uh, set dir command to, uh, we'll, we'll use those four digit years, but we'll also uh, just group everything uh, by name and then extension. So O is says to order and then group directories first and then uh, sort everything by name and then extension, O G N E. Uh, I don't have the slash P, which was actually what gave me that prompt every time I fill a page. And so now if I do a directory, you can see I'm just getting. Everything. So what are the uh, the dot coms and the dot exes? Those are the ones that you really want to pay attention to because those are the core programs for FreeDOS. So we'll do a dir on all the exe programs. And we'll do a wide directory listing for that. And so you can see, uh, really, it's everything that would typically be in a base install of FreeDOS plus some other stuff. So it's got some extra stuff that you might need. Uh, to use on your system. I can see in here if we got, uh, for example, zip and unzip, which is pretty important if you want to extract any of the uh, zip files that are on here. We also have tar and things like that. Uh, the com programs, do a directory on com, make that a wide directory. You can see all the uh, com programs on here, right? Standard DOS programs like comp and debug and find and things like that. But you're seeing a bunch of other programs in here that uh, we've added, especially uh, the, uh, the the V8 power tools, which are all the commands that start with a V there towards the bottom of the list. Now, other things you can see, you see we got AMB. Well, actually, we have a new help system loaded. So if I do uh, just help, you can see that by default, it's going to load up the AMB help. AMB stands for the Ancient Machine Book. And I did another video on that uh, earlier on this channel. And this is the standard viewer for the FreeDOS help documentation in FreeDOS 1.3 RC4. So all I'm doing is I can just use my, uh, my keys uh, to navigate around. I could highlight uh, this or I could use tab to switch between different links. And uh, let's go ahead and look at uh, Edlin. Let's hit enter on that. And you can see now that enter uh, all the different uh, help options for Edlin. I can use the arrows to go up and down. I can also use page up and page down to view all the great documentation about the Edlin editor. 
and just escape to get back out. And if I wanted to, I could click on any of the other options in here, um, Propo, things like that, right? So, uh, and if I hit escape to get back to the start and I hit escape one more time, it'll actually prompt me to exit. And then yes, yeah, press exit again to quit. And so that's the new help system that we have on FreeDOS 1.3 RC4. Uh, now, some other things you can do in this, we actually have uh, a couple of games installed in this live CD environment. So if I do a directory here on the executables, uh, we actually have installed in the bin directory. It actually should be in the games directory, but uh, we've got Senet, and you can see it uh, towards the bottom of the list on the right-hand side, Senet. And so if I just do that, Senet, that gives me simple Senet. And I wrote this game as part of last year's uh, video series about how to program in C on FreeDOS. And this is uh, one of the demo programs that I wrote for it, and this is showing you how to use uh, screen control. Uh, I also did another video on, on Simple Sonnet at the time, uh, but just to kind of remind you about what you're doing here, this is the ancient Egyptian game of Sonnet. You've got two uh, colored pieces, player one and player two, and uh, you can use the uh, arrow keys to get around. Uh, you can also use tab to select the next piece. And you can see at the bottom of the screen, it's telling me I need to run the black pieces. And so I'm gonna just do tab because it'll switch between all of those different pieces. Uh, on the right hand side on the bottom, you can see throwing sticks says my move is one. And if I move this piece, just hit space on this uh, piece, it'll swap with the white piece on its right. See? And now the next uh, move here is the white. And so that my move is three on the bottom right. And I can just do tab over here to pick up this piece and move it three pieces. And because it's Sonnet, it runs in this sort of backwards S configuration. You can see the little marks on each row indicating that it's turning a little corner basically. And so if I hit space on that, you can see it's gonna jump uh, forward three spaces. Uh, and now I can uh, move the black piece and I can just do tab over here. And this will put it into that blank space that was uh, previously held by that white piece and just space on that. So you can see this is Simple Sonnet. Again, I've done another video on Simple Sonnet and I'll leave that one for you to play with. I'll just hit escape here to quit the game. Yes, I wanna quit the game. And uh, one other uh, game we have installed is the uh, Flappy Bird, the very classic Flappy Bird uh, game. I'm gonna back up to the root directory and you can see we've got a games directory. So I'll do a CD into games. And then we'll go into Flappy Bird. And we can now, uh, we can look at the, uh, the documentation for Flappy Bird. So we could uh, do a type on readme.md and pipe that into the more command if we wanted to view the file. It's a long file, uh, but basically you're uh, gonna hit space to flap the bird's wings. Uh, and, um, that's really all there is to it. So let's go ahead and run Flappy Bird. And so there's my bird. And as soon as I press any key, it's going to start flapping its wings. I'll hit the space key here. Flap, 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 flap. There he is. Fly between the little pipes. And so that's Flappy Bird. Uh, I've done another video on this one as well uh, last year. And so I'll leave that to you. I'll just go ahead and let my Flappy Bird fall off and hit the pipe. There we go. Uh, and I'll just hit escape to get out. So I'll, uh, I just wanted to do a quick video here to show some of the things you can do in FreeDOS 1.3 release candidate four. So again, thank you to everybody on the FreeDOS project and everybody who's contributed to uh, fix bugs and identify bugs and write documentation and all the other things that people are doing to help with FreeDOS. You really uh, are making this release possible. Uh, before I go, I also want to thank the people who are supporting me on Patreon. So if you're supporting me on Patreon, thank you very much. You are definitely making this channel happen. Some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and I want to thank you especially here for that. So thank you. Before I go, uh, visit us on freedos.org, join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.